I just wanted to show you how I would ink up something like this. I really love the way the colours on this one have worked. So there's the yellows and orange, reds, deep blues, and then these lovely greens and browns towards the bottom. So because I like those colours, I've got a plate here which I'm going to ink up for you, I'll show you how I do it. This is a smaller one. Um, I don't know if you can see. I've attempted to do these colours on this smaller one. And the one beside it is just one of my normal tree, autumn tree ones. Because they look so nice when they're finished. Um, after I've printed them, I leave the last lot of inks in them and I frame the little plate up as well. So we'll have a see. See if I can ink this one up to look a bit like this because I really like this one. What's really nice about it as well is that the leaves have got these lovely dark lines through them as well so I like that and I'm going to see if I can replicate that. So I've got browns, yellow, this lovely pink which is called, it's called Rubine Red and it's a really beautiful pink. And there is a gorgeous turquoise colour here as well. By the look of this one, it looks like it was inked up with a darker colour, maybe a brown, and then the colours were added after, which is very tricky because the colours all become muddy. But I am going to try that because I really like the way this one's worked. I don't know whether it's because the whole plate is bigger and therefore there's a bit more play with it there's a bit more space with it than these smaller ones where you're really sort of squashing it all in but let's see what happens so I'm going to go for a brown green so I've got a grey brown and you'll see like it starts to fill in the holes and it's not really what I want because I want the holes I'll show you I want the holes to be fillable with the other with the actual coloured inks so I'm going to have to put this on and see if I can get it into some of the holes, you know, some of the depths. But take off so much of it that I can then put another colour on, which I think is going to be pretty, pretty tricky. So let's see what happens. I'm just putting stuff onto where I know there's tree trunks. And leaving some areas clean so that they're easier to, to ink up afterwards. But I'm hoping this lovely green, grey, brown is going to sit into some of the edges so that when I actually ink it up with a colour, it'll still be there, but not so much that it's going to take off the colour of the other bits. You'll see what I mean. Because the colours, the pure colours, the bright colours get corrupted really easily with this ink. And the method, of course, is you squidge it all about the place. And there isn't much control, as you can see. Oh, that's a bit too um, sticky. I'm just going to put a bit of, what's it called, a bit of linseed oil on there. love that colour, that brown and the green. And I want it so there's very little I want it so there's very little on there. So I'm gonna have to really clean it off. Keep using clean bits of newsprint. Right, now I'm gonna go for the red. I shouldn't really, I should go for the yellow. Because the yellow again is really easily corrupted so you sort of use it first towards the bottom, so I'm going to... You see it immediately starts going green, which I don't really want, but we'll see what happens. So take that off. It's extremely sticky too. It's cold in the studio. Oops, that's far too much. Can't find my pipettes. Oops. <laughs> now I'm just sliming all over the place. I don't mind those rather strange colours coming through. I don't 
Must be better. And I do want some yellows, some pure yellows in it as well. I'm going to try and get some in these areas that were still clear on that one, but it's going, just going green, it's just getting mucky. I'll try up the top and put this top as well. Sort of going for where there's still gaps in the in the leaves where it's not full up of the first initial colour. Here goes again. And this time when you take it off, try and move it away from the other colour and try not, don't rub it too hard because you see then you just rub them into each other but we'll see, we'll see what happens and I can see there's a few empty spaces but I'll leave them for some orange this is really important to get, to clean it away from the other colour and to try not to let it corrupt too much because of course it just goes green with the other colour I've got a bit of yellow in that side and I mean I do like that strange green there's a point here in Derbyshire when early autumn when the ferns are turning from green to rust but they go through a really bright yellow transition first oh it's so stunning it's absolutely stunning I'll see if I can find a photograph of it and put it in the video well, I've got some yellows in there but very little not as much as I wanted you see, at this point, do I just stop and go, it's actually going to be green? Because I think I'm fighting a losing battle to try and get more colours in there. And I think even if I put pure yellow and just concentrate into this corner, it's not going to go yellow. But I, if I don't get enough green, yellow on it, it's not going to look right, it's going to look silly. See what I can do with them. Again, try not to smudge in the green too much. This is terrible, isn't it? In terms of the lesson, it's all over the place. I think what I'll have to do is That does look quite interesting. I'm going to go for an orange as well, just because it's nice and rich. I'm just going to see what happens with that. Yeah, you see, I think it's just going to go like a dirty green, isn't it? I think that's one of these things with these is you do have to be really careful what colours you apply first. What I'll do is I'll try printing this one off as is and then clean it off completely, let it dry and try a different series of colours, you know, a different order of colours. I don't know how intense these are going to be either. I mean, as it gets dark in the studio, what is it now? It's about half past three. You completely lose the yellows, you know, the yellows you can't see so much anymore. I've now got the brown and I'm just touching it through to where the branches are just to give it that sort of definition. To tell you the truth, uh, I should have used blue there, but we'll see. I suppose the brown's better with the green and the blue would be better with those lovely multicolors. So now just to take that out. And again, if you s just smidge it about, you will just mix the brown into everything else. You sort of have to pick it, pick it out of the space without messing it into everything else too much. There's spaces that I don't mind it. And you're, you're sort of pressing it into the grooves as the, at the same time as burnishing it off, but not pulling it out the grooves. There it goes, nearly finished. And then it would just be a burnish. And then some more papers. Right. I mean, that looks quite nice. Okay, remove all these dirty papers. Try again with some more. I quite like quite a lot of the orange left at the bottom of, of these because it sort of makes the undergrowth seem more dense. Neaten up some of the bits that are a bit blodgy. Take, it, take some off the edges. But again, I, 
I mean, it's such a mess. You know, the actual paper that it's on is so filthy. So you, as you take it over to the edges, you're pulling the ink off the paper and just smearing it back onto the plate. Right, that's the first inking up. So as I've said before in other videos, it doesn't always work the first time very well because the plate is sort of being primed with paint this first time. Right, place it on the bed of the press. Get the piece of soap fabric on the paper and put it over the print nice and centrally. Lay the paper down over the top to stop the size from the paper getting into the blankets and damaging the blankets. And put it through the press. Right. So this is the first one. Oh, well, that's come out lovely. Yeah, that's come out really nicely. That's one. And actually, I do really like the green plate. I might just do it all in greens. It's funny how things like that often work to your advantage. You know, they're a bonus. 